Oh, this is awesome, Sarah. So you've been a reflector the whole time. Yes. <laughs> when did you first um, find out about this? So I actually had a, my best friend, um, she actually got me into this um, back when I was like 17, 18. I'm 34 now. Mm. So I've known about this for a long time. Um, I haven't done like any of the deep dives, like, you know, Mary was talking about, which I'm like, I should really probably do this. Um, but I have always been like a big seeker of who I am, what I'm about, you know, because life has always been really, really difficult for me. Um, mm. I'm a two, four. So. Yeah, me too. Are you? <laughs> yeah. 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 We don't want to hear it half the time. We just don't want, it's like, we're just leave us alone. Have you noticed? Right. Yeah. Like my hermit side is very, very Deep. intense. Yeah, like I, I am definitely like almost a ninety percent hermitized and ten percent right. people person. Right. right. So um, it was kind of like Normal. very validating in so many ways to read about this kind of stuff and learn and be like, hey, you know what? I'm not psycho. I'm not weird. Like all these people are just like, you know, why are you so? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, there's a reason. Like I'm just built differently than you. Right. You know. So I don't even know any other reflectors in my personal life. I've never met anybody. So, I went. I went a while without ever even reading for a reflector. Um, sometimes I would go, you know, almost a year in between. It was amazing. Um, and, and the thing is, this two four profile of ours is just so. So this two four of ours, it's so. It's just so critical because really and truly, if when you her, when I hermit, I know what it is. Nothing's lighting me up, and that's true for all of us. But there's something else about my frustration and my sacral motor. When you hermit. It is literally, I'm not in the right place. I'm not with the right people. Um, society is not healthy enough for all of me. And so I have to go out and dribs and drabs, just like you would, if you know, you have a, if you're around a bunch of smoky area or whatever, because you got fires, you don't want to keep walking into it. You can only go in there a little bit. You know what I mean? Hey, come on in. We need help. Go in for a few, come back out. And so the world is smoky and hazy. And it's not always you guys are the recipients of see that there's these changing lines that keep happening in your body graph. Um, but it means it's not healthy out there. It's, yeah. it's, and so you are, you probably have yourself a couple of besties and that's about, that's about it. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so if you're a reflector, sometimes you're invited and it's exactly right. And that's a surprise. If you're a reflector, sometimes you're impulsively generating an awareness and a thing and that's healthy. And that's a surprise, a healthy one. Um, um. And sometimes you're emotionally waiting on something. I'm um, going through the fact that you're always defined different ways yeah. to get you back to this anchoring thing. Me, us generators, we can we can uh, practice our strategy right away. You know what I mean? Oh, I like it. I don't like it. I have my energy's here. It stopped. It came. It stopped. You know, it's like wagging a dog. Um, yeah, it's annoying at times, but it's it's great. At I learned to I love me the way I am. I'm perfect, and and you are too. And so. What's what have you noticed out there that pulls you out into the fourth line networking? This 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 opportunist because you want it. That fourth line sits in the background, it always wants it. Yeah. Right? It's I don't know, it's really weird for me because like I said, I'm I'm in such a weird secluded area, like where I live. Like there's just not a lot of things that oh. speak to me as a human anyway. Okay. All right. But it's, but it's like having, like you said, it's kind of like having that invitation. Like I'm constantly waiting for it. Right. Like there's, I'm, I'm just waiting all the time. It feels like, and, you know, because society is so pressure driven and, you know, that constant gratification and everything's got to be moving 24 seven. It's very exhausting for me as who I am because it's like I don't operate that way and it's like like you said we live in a generator society like we live in a generator world <clears throat> so to have that constant pressure all the time I do find myself in that disappointment tumble a lot tumble that's a good word yeah, yeah. um have you started to notice that that's that this, that particular disappointment is also your cleansing and warning system it's yes a, yeah and so it sucks okay on one side and on the other side you started to at least recognize at least since it sucks it's serving me yeah i know what i, I know what not to do you know what i mean 
and it alleviates the open head stuff that will be i need to know what to do <laughs> and i don't know what to do and it bothers me and so have you have you been able to now be kind to yourself enough to say it doesn't matter i don't it's still i don't like the disappointment but at least it's not my fault it's out there it's not here it's out there because you guys are reflecting back the stuff it's like right. a big job in fact it's Absolutely. a big so few of you literally transmitting the message of where our position is where we are what's good what's not good this is this is your place and i don't know how that feels to a reflector i would love to know how that feels now you know now i'm asking it if there's any way you can even say well you know and i think i think it's well for me i would say it is kind of difficult to know because being so much out on the outside you do feel like an outsider you don't really feel like you belong here even though you know you're an integral part of it but so overlooked in the sense that it's like i had I had so lost myself many, many times throughout my life, you know, and it's like the validation of coming back and being like, there really is nothing wrong with me. I operate the way I operate. This is right for me. I'm so tired of that outside pressure all the time, but it's like, if I can just get back into myself and be like, you know what? I know who I am. This is all your problem, not mine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> take it with you and let me do my job that's when you really, well, for me specifically, that's when I start to feel like I'm belonging when people are coming to me and reflecting off of me and I'm helping guide them. I'm, you know, seeing the full angle of everything that other people don't see. And then people will be like, Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right. You know, so actually feeling like I can do my job, even though it's not really a job, I'm not getting paid for it. You know, <laughs> like right. it's validating. It's just, but it's, it is weird because you, you, I feel like such an alien so much of the time that that's, well, that's another reason why, you know, the hermitization comes naturally to me because it's just like, right. I just, I don't fit in with this. This is not my space. I'm going to wait it out. I'm going back in. Uh, as it should be. Um, <clears throat> oh, this is your chart on the screen. All righty. Oh, look at that. Um, there, was there how long have you been when did you first hear about this a year ago four years ago long short um no i was 17 when i first found out about this no um, way yeah did you did you take it did you take it in at the time or did it brush over no i i did because well like i said my best friend she really got into it she's a three five projector um and we have like an insane amount of connectivity her and i like her name is also sarah we've known each other since we were two like our mm -hmm. astrology charts are literally mirrors of each other it's the most bizarre thing in the world mm -hmm. but she got really really deep into it and she was kind of teaching me you know she was she was kind of guiding me through you know how i operate and why you know her and i worked so well together and why you know i was doing a lot of things that i was doing and experiencing that kind of stuff so yeah i started to integrate it and stuff but it's like, you know, I get lost in life, you know, like as you do. And then yep. as I've gotten older and so many things have changed in my life, I have definitely come back to this along with a lot of other stuff. And I'm, I'm taking more initiative to take control of the way I operate in my life and not letting everything else and other people dictate because that's when I was starting to notice how miserable I was. Like the depression right. was terrible. And like, you know, the disappointment. I was just constantly disappointed in everything and everybody, including myself. Like, I it's just robbed so... us of our life force. Yeah. Living out our not self themes is a, is a, is a life killer, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, right. So, Didn't mean to interrupt your flow. No, no, but that's, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm coming back a lot harder to this kind of stuff because I'm also trying to escape corporate um, America. I'm, I'm Get the hell out. Get out. <laughs> yeah. It. And it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, no, which actually I kind of want to lead into, you know, the the lunar choicing here. So like I have always been obsessed with the moon. Like you said, yes, you know. So you were. I was gonna ask you, tell me what has the moon meant to you? I've never met a reflector that didn't have something there. No joke, you could put me in a windowless building for two months and I could tell you almost exactly where the moon phase is every month because of the way I feel. 
and the right. way my body's reacting. Like I have sinked into the moon so hard. <gasps> and so, so you've taken this good. part of the experiment seriously. You know where yes. the moon is for you. Yes. Yep. And I have so utilized <clears throat> that in my own life. And now that I've, you know, I've started integrating the way that we operate more and more, I noticed. So kind of the way I do it with my experiment is depending on whatever decision comes and how big it is, you know, whatever phase it's closest to, and they usually come on like the new or the full moons I've noticed. Okay. So what I do is like, if something happens to me around the new moon, I take it. I'm like, okay, this is a big deal. Um, I fill it out. It is what it is. And then by the time the moon room or the full moon comes around, I sit down again and really assess, be like, okay, we're halfway how am I feeling? Is it changed? Is it progressing? Is it feeling any better than before? Is it not like, you know, that kind of thing. And then by the time that, that 28 days or whatever comes around, I've already got my decision pretty much solidified. Mm. Um, so I actually just started my own business this last new moon. <laughs> nice. I, I got my LLC and everything. So it was like, I was able to fully look at the whole thing you know, and, and this has actually been in the works for about a year, but it was that jump that I just wasn't sure if I was ready for. And right. by the time it came around, I'm like, yeah, it's here. It's, this is it. Like I, I could feel the push that this was my decision and yes, it was correct. And it was time to go. So, right. so let's take at this moment, because this is how we keep assessing truth. Humanity, when it learns this, it'll remember, oh, that's what I did when I was four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what'll happen. Um, so the kid is always right. I don't know if you heard that comment. It's a little axiom. Yes. Was, the child is always correct. Um, so you're moving through. The cycle comes around. You start to see. And then suddenly you notice in your body that you have energy you didn't have. Yes. Whatever was depressive before or upsetting, you almost can't even feel that right now because something else has pulled you into something that is more four-year-old like as it relates to being surprised and pleasantly surprised and feeling yes. good and feeling good so it's like this keynote in human design just feel, does it feel good you know mm -hmm. that's why it's do what feels good essentially um people are afraid of that slogan let me tell you uh, but it's <laughs> it there's truth to it is the thing so you were going to ask a little bit about about just sort of this thing you're doing and you're still in corporate america and i imagine what your your, your thing that you're doing on your own has to build up before you can do anything with the corporate job you currently have is that a fair statement yeah um yeah. i mean like i have clientele already like i'm going but it's like to get the funds to be able to leave that behind it's going to be i'm going to say at least a year if not more yeah, um, yeah i mean that's I mean, what it is yeah you know, and, and so then as you watch the gates fill in on the moon and yourself going through over and over again, you get to like literally fill up some of your hermit time just recognizing, oh, my God, we can recognize this. Oh, my God, there's science behind it. Oh, my God, I can prove it if I have to. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Have you read anyone else's design for them, like friends or set a thing or? Yes, um, I have done my partner um, and I have done a couple of co-workers and friends that, you know, mm -hmm. I've kind of talked a little bit about and they're like, that sounds really interesting. And I'm like, well, I can do yours right now if you know, you know, all the specifics and stuff. Right. So, yeah, I have. And it's it's really interesting. It's empowering. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times when I read for someone, it's because they, they, you know, they want it and then uh, or they think, or you know, they're close to it. And um their jaws drop, you know, when we get into the real good stuff and it's this amazing thing. So, um, how familiar are, uh, how familiar are you with your cross? Not well, but tension it's in the name when Ra Uruhu was naming these crosses, he, you know, he named them. The voice did not name these crosses for him per se at yeah. all. Really? They, what they did is give him the information this was named for our planet earth at the time is really uh so tension is exactly what the word says and it's not that you're supposed to go around with tension it's the beauty part of tension that then turns hard for others i always use the example of a piano string mm. we love the piano right guitar what are your instrument there's got to be tension on those strings yep or 
you get the no tension the music doesn't play other people around get uncomfortable with this tension from time to time or sometimes incredibly because part of this cross is a struggler and a fighter and a provocateur and a little freaking god dang they're saying something the person who must confront right in a way. um because because the the fighter needs to come out fighting for the individual purpose i'm referring to the the unconscious side of your design so that 38 and that 39 they come off of the pressurized root center so they're delivering an adrenalized punch every time they are you know coming out which is basically always always available and the other always senses it in you the person that you're with or around or the people always we're always aware of what the other person's cross is, what their design is. We don't have words for it, and we can't tell, but I'm just saying it's there. That yeah. means other people are aware that in your design, there's times when you come out fighting, you come out saying a thing, or they don't know if you're gonna, because they don't know you yet, or yeah. or they don't like it because they wanted something else. You know what I'm saying? And Here's this person where 48 on the conscious side and 21, 21, we already know, bites through the thing and has an ego willpower to sort of control what 48, it's grounding is, I mean, it's 48 is this power that comes in on it. The grounding for you is this sense of how, how you're going to control a thing and be in charge of a thing or basically at least be with it as it's being moved along. And 48 says, and, and I have a solution for all of that. You know, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you're right. It just means right now this is the deal. And so people feel that as a tension, especially with this adrenalized fuel coming out of 39 and 38, that that since they're individual, uh, they can't really be influenced. So part part of this the half of this design is deaf to the other. Yeah. Have you noticed? You just don't even, it's like someone's talking, you tell me you've noticed this, people are talking and within the first four sentences, you're like, oh my God, I'm tuning out and I have to pretend I'm polite and listening. I'm oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's not their fault. It doesn't make them boring. It's just, it's not yours yet. You've got a different struggle. You've got a different thing. Um, and so that itself can seem odd to others at times, but Ask me a question, if you can, about this cross, about, or about just about yourself within it. Um, oh, man, I don't know. I mean, it's like... If, if nothing, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I wouldn't even know what to ask, honestly. Have you noticed that, that you feel... I'm just curious about some things. I'll ask you then. Just do you feel, do you feel the cross's name of tension? Usually it'll be around you. Sometimes it'll be in you. I really don't know. All right. Um, have you noticed it when you in your corporate job? You actually go in and go and sit at a desk or do? Okay. All right. I she do. Eyes. God, you got to get out, honey. Um, I know. I, I, I will say though, I I have learned that. Um, my environments i have figured out that if my environments are miserable i'm miserable and i'm a rotten human being so right. i have actually made my entire space up front i have like 20 plants around me i've got all my crystals around my desk i mean like i have made it home <laughs> which which makes it more palpable so perfect but it's like I, I feel like it's it's almost a shielding mm. in a way it makes it so that i can get through a day every day right right exactly Exactly. So. I get that. Now that makes good sense. Um, how about this? Well, one more thing just then about tension. Um, the suns and the always are this driving force. The earths receive the sun's driving force and become the grounding. Now translate that into a human life. The sun is just this, what the sun does to us during the daytime. It's constantly driving in on us. So we count that as like pouring in. And the earth is like, oh, I'm receiving it. I'm going to grow up some plants and make some food. And what the you know, earth grows it up. Earth is mother and grows it up. Uh, mm -hmm. Sun obviously meets the description of father. It's just pouring it in. It, it's a driving yang force. And so when you put these together, you see this 48 is, I naturally have a solution. Because the second line is a natural. They're a little natural. They're suddenly called out into the world to do a thing and until that calling comes nothing quite feels right 
Um, and, and so that's why your job, when I noticed when you mentioned the thing, your project you're on, you're, you were more lit up. There's a calling for that. And so yeah. that's the two force, the great missionary, the, the called individual that can't be stopped essentially. Um, so that 48 just suddenly real, that's see second lines are always recognizing that they suddenly recognize something. You know what I mean? We don't know in advance. We don't know we're in a bubble. The second line bubbles itself its whole its whole way out in the world as it relates to any kind of intimacy is shyness before boldness it's got a shell around it that protects it from others influence it says don't try to influence me so your the individual gates in your cross say don't try to influence me the second line says please don't try to influence me and i'm going to get away from you if you do and it's all happens in nanoseconds. These aren't words that you're saying to somebody because you know you don't even want to be rude. And again, they're not bad. You just you gotta get out. I think I think I may kind of sort of understand your question about the name for the cross. To I, it's help like, me here, yeah. It's being unauthentic. It, for me, it's like it's an unauthentic feeling that um that is created by. The other outside. things the outside yeah. so important to you. the outside world so important to you yeah right anything on oh that is perfect anything on you just you described a good thing anything unauthentic won't fit with 38 and 39 yeah it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel right it's repulsive in a energetic force way right and and at times to even provoke it doesn't sound fun because there's other times where you like to provoke things you're a little button pusher is that true? <laughs> oh, yeah. When yes, it comes it's always out. for good intent. It's always for good intent because it's like I see the good in people and like I I can see how their habits or their tendencies, their chosen mm -hmm. bad decisions like repetitively keeps them from being their their best self. And so I do. I like to poke it and be like, "Hey, did you ever consider that, you know, this and this and this is leading to this exact same cycle you continue to repeat?" And in your corporate job, it only takes a word or two and people get on edge at times. Is that true? <laughs> my, so. Unless you have to I, be quiet or something. I don't know, but. No, my, I, I am a very unique person in that office in a sense that it's Before. not a bad place to work, but they all never know what's going to come out of me next. And I'm kind of the same way. Like I never really know, but they actually kind of, they listen to me. And they will actually bounce a lot of things off of me. And I'm kind of like, I am the go-to person in the office where if they need to bitch about somebody, I'm the one. And it's usually, you know, like customer related. And they, it's like, they just come to vent and then they leave fine. Well, one thing that occurs to me to make your corporate job more bearable is, I don't know how you'll do it. And you may have already done this, but position yourself Usually it's just a it's usually just a change in your vibration towards things. Just position yourself to be the person that reflects back whatever comes in from the other. Yeah. And I I I definitely have picked that up more and more if I've gotten older. I've become more of the reflector than the absorber. Right. Yes. Because that was my biggest downfall. Like when I didn't really integrate my experiment, it was like I was just absorbing everything. And it's like yeah. I meant to sample and mm -hmm taste everything out and like feel everything out but it's like i'm not meant to hold on to it i didn't understand that so i was i was just i was like this like i had so much crap God. on me and in me yeah. that wasn't mine and yeah. then i was like what am i doing there's a reason i feel like this there's a reason that i'm so you know i'm so disappointed is because i was holding on to stuff that just wasn't mine right right you that know? will leave yeah I, I had to literally be like, I'm literally a mirror. That's why I'm called a reflector. What am I doing? Why am I absorbing everything? No. Right. And then so you had to come up with this basic spot. So it's just so amazing. The mechanics inside of human design, mechanics for anyone who's listening, is just the ability to use, to, to see workings inside the body graph that lead to stuff on the surface we can understand and explain to them. Mechanics. So mechanics in your car make the car work. Mechanics in our body graph make us be able to have this understanding and this awareness. Um, <clears throat> I love how the mechanics work so well. And they literally are saving everyone who gets in starts to realize I am different. And, and these mechanics save me. So you witness, oh, I've absorbed. Because you're right, this absorbent 
aura of yours. It's as strong as the manifestor's aura to repel. It's just right. that it doesn't repel. So it can hold at bay. It puts people in a little tractor beam. <laughs> so you can sample them. And um, I've noticed this one thing, by the way, that I can ask. Um, so you're with your partner um, and you go out into the world. You do something. I was about to say your boyfriend, but I don't want to make any assumptions. Um, okay, good. So you go out with your boyfriend into the world and then whatever. Someone comes on up to you. guys, hey, blah, blah, blah. Have you noticed someone comes up to you? And they start just sort of talking and they sort of lean towards your boyfriend first because they have a sense that you're tractor beaming them with a sample, with your sample machine going. Have you noticed that? It'd be subtle, 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 but you could see it. Actually, yes. And I, it's actually a woman, my partner. I actually have okay. two partners. So I okay, mean, you're so probably not wrong. So depending yeah. on who I'm out with or if, with, if I'm with both, they do tend to gravitate towards those two or whoever I'm with because... I know um, she is a generator mm -hmm. and I'm pretty, oh, right. <laughs> I, and I haven't done his yet, but I'm pretty sure he's a manny gen. Okay. But yeah. The, the gravitation is towards them. And then it's like, it's not like they're side eyeing me, but they're like really, really trying to figure me out, you know? And it's not just yep. like, you know, the relationship stigma of it. It's just like, you know, they're like, I'm, I'm not sure about this one's energy. Now, if I'm alone, it's completely different. Like people vacuum to me and right. I'm like, Right, 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 right. So, it's, but yes, you're right. That is funny as hell because if you think about it, the person walks up. Don't so our our, our aura um, it sends out like Wi-Fi, transmits like Wi-Fi, and even faster and more detailed. Everything about our design into the other and vice versa immediately. That happens as a mechanic, luckily. Um, so they walk up to you, and um, they aren't just like basically given a wall if you're a manifester or, or don't forget that manifester can do the opposite. It can invite them in and, and, and offer to impact them and they can be very attractive to look at right away. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. that's not happening. They're not getting enveloped like, oh, that one's cool. It didn't matter which one I spoke to first. And they're not getting this sense of, oh, I'm with this inviting, penetrating aura that I might want to be here discussing something with. With you, they get the tractor beam held in place. <laughs> They're seeing that's a mechanic that can be relied upon. Doesn't mean no one will ever talk to you first. That's not the point. It just right. means you sense it. Um, and and now you can stand back and just let it happen. You know, it, uh, in case ever when you were younger, you would wonder why that took place sometimes. So if you were with a group of friends, you're sitting there aligning the friends more than you would have known when you were little. Yet someone new comes into the group and I can envision, I don't know, you tell me and suddenly um, you're not the first go-to of the group but because you're holding them up there. Or was that different when you were younger? No, now that you mention that. Yeah, what is this? Let's talk that's about That's exactly how I remember it. Like, and I never really had like a big group of friends, but yeah, it was like, it was usually a trio, sometimes, you know, yep. a duo or whatever, yep. or a quad. Yeah. And yeah, it was like, if there was a group of boys running around, I was always the last to get noticed or talked to. Always. But you weren't. You were the first. Huh. Yeah. But they don't know what, what, what can they say? They're held in a, in a, they're held in a form of suspense. It's an energetic suspense. They could crash right through that and just start blabbing at you. Hmm. It's, it's an energetic thing. It's not, not a real tractor beam. It's not like they can't move right. past, but um, it's an energetic thing. It mm -hmm. is the thing, and, and and so really and truly, if you look back over time, I bet you're you're gonna find that many times, eyeballs literally went to you first and then moved away quickly. Hmm, that's very interesting. I am definitely or concerned. approaches. So eyeballs from far away, ten feet away, and then suddenly as they approach the movement so that you can sample would move away. I, I don't know, this is so subtle. I can't wait to look into this. When are we gonna find our scientists that are all accredited at colleges <laughs> that have measuring devices that can measure stuff and run studies? Yeah. You know, we need some of yeah. that. Why are we not doing that? Why are we not doing that? We need big time ones so that people can see it work out. Um, what else did I want to go into this? Anything about this hermit networker? Because it's so profound. We're the ones that bring lots of messages out into the world. Um, because we can't, have you know, remember that the last time you couldn't be stopped? 
the two four when the mission gets called when the being is called into a mission it's so profound it's like a priest being called you know yeah. Yeah, and then and then your networking capacity becomes like insane and now every opportunity from the opportunist is followed up and yep. you just become a force and it's like you know good I, yep i do i remember that exact thing that's and this is where you're supposed to be and your environment and the people and the more people you end up being able to invite into your circle and and be around generally speaking um is pretty much the way to go it's yeah. the way to go and it when it feels right that feeling of being called into your life even more will be will even go up from there and it's another mechanic you get to watch do i feel this way or not your business obviously gives that to you um how about so we just talked about that aura that re resistant and sampling how about this existential question that all reflectors have it, it's born deep into the genome it's again it's a mechanic okay. so for those of you listening you already i think you know the question who are they but for those listening that don't know um mechanics are yes inside our genome is encoded that our consciousness will be asking an actual question doesn't matter what what language you're in or what society you're in the question's still the same and so who are they this genetic mandate for you to witness what's my milieu my milieu would be my environment would they in it it's not an empty environment. It's got the other humans in it. Sure. So, but just keynoted with who are they? How does that, because it's not even just who are you. As soon as there's a couple people, it's who are they as a group. Right. And, and, but tease that out for me. I don't, I don't live that out the same way, you know, obviously. Oh, man. That's a really good question because, I mean, the enigma of, humanity in and of itself it's like as a reflector enigma seeing all of it and even not all of it it's like it, it's a chaotic conundrum for me you know because i think i don't know like the self-awareness i feel like of humanity as a whole right now is just like very very mute uh, like it's people are not grounded they're not in touch so everything's very chaotic so for me mm. ain't it the truth yeah so i think oh, wow okay i've got to wrangle my thoughts because i've got so many um why well, um yeah who are they they don't know you know so it's Does like you don't know maybe i think more or less <laughs> as a reflector i have the ability to literally reflect their actions and their projections back to them so that maybe they can do a little self-reflecting themselves to figure what, out yeah. who they are i've uh, found all the types that do our various things i remember one day tressa one of my students um <clears throat> that we were pointing out for projectors and i was like uh, she I had just gotten to her with this amazing realization that it's not so much that they only guide us like, oh, all projectors need to go into middle management now. You know what I mean? No, that would be a homogenized thing. What it really is, is that their presence penetrates us and causes us to try and self-guide yeah. and question our guidance. And then your reflection comes along and reflects back at us and tells us the same thing one is sort of starting the guidance process and the other is evaluating the looking the looking the evaluation of it because the simple penetration of the projector's aura might cause this guidance process but what am i really evaluating what am i seeing I don't, and then you come along and show more so together god it sounds like we should pair, you, know, you guys should pair up and walk around and fix places <laughs> i would love that i would love that I mean, heck, I mean, my best friend and I, like I said, she's she's yes. one heck of a projector. And it's like, we do and always have worked so well together. And it's like, yeah, people change around us. Like, it's really different. So it's like, that's hey. actually something you can bottle and sell. I mean, you know, as it relates to doing a thing that might feel awesome, uh, some form of thing to call to you as feeling good, you know, because mm. uh, I don't know what you would market that as, but that's like basically 
the kid version of it is is hey bring these two over they help make it better uh, like like life coaching stuff <laughs> sure now you add on the adult stuff to it but the kid version yeah. the truth part is hey bring you know bring johnny and susie out they make it better you know that's the four-year-old <laughs> they're version. so much fun my 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 daughter when she was very young I, I remember i said i need a new slogan for the business and and i was coming up with all these things leading the charge and da, 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 and she's just tell them you're faster and better is what yeah. she said we went with it yeah, yeah. that's so yeah, funny yeah. It, but yeah. it, oh, my point being from the mouth of the babe you know from the child um mm -hmm. just just tell them you're faster and better um same thing here so who are they is, I think we covered that then. I think we got a sense of, it really is a big thing, but it's, it's what are you seeing? It's, does it feel right? 